Okay, hi everybody, Professor Failauer here, and I wanted to give a few tips on reading and comprehending research, as well as a few tips on summarizing research. So, reading research can be really difficult. It can be very dry, it can be very technical language, there can be a lot of jargon, a lot of numbers and data, and it can get really overwhelming. Some research um, reports, research articles are very, very, very long. Um, so it can be time consuming to read. Now, because of that, it's good to have some good general tips or methods on how to read the research, how to consume it, how to really take it in. Um, so, here are my tips. First, just general steps, okay? So you could see these things could be done sequentially. You could say these things could be done sequentially. First, start with the abstract of the article. Seems maybe self-evident, but it's a great starting point. The abstract is usually right there on the top. Well, it's always right there on the top. Read the abstract. Should really, it's a very, very simple, usually very brief uh, condensing of the research. So you're gonna get a lot of information there. So start there. After reading the abstract, the next thing you should do is read the conclusions or the results section of the research. So they might call it conclusion and results. There also might be a discussion section um, in the article that can also be very useful to understanding the, the research article as a whole. That means you're gonna have to skip down, scroll down, turn the page, whatever. Go close to the end and read that. So first abstract, next conclusions, discussions, results section. Put those two together, you should now be able to have a pretty good understanding of what the research is about. Next thing I would encourage you to do is um, close to the beginning of most research articles, they will do a lit review, literature review. So this is kind of a collection of what's already been studied, what's out there um, that has helped the, the, those researchers, those authors form their understanding of what it is that they're doing of that particular field. So for example, you know, if you're reading a research article on research article on brain growth or brain plasticity, well, you're going to expect to find some kind of primer, some explanation of what other research has been done on brain plasticity and why it would be meaningful to continue to look at and study brain brain plasticity. So that would be the literature review section. Great place to get a, a foundation to understanding the study that you're reading. The next thing you should do, read the methods uh, section where they'll describe the research, how it was done, um, what type of research was it, what was the sample pool like, how long did the research go, where did it take place, all of those things. That's in the methods section. It can be very technical. And the methods section, I would say, is not entirely the most essential piece for somebody who's doing a general summary. Now, if I was a researcher and I wanted to replicate or, or extend research um, to broaden the field uh, and to provide more understanding and to collect more data, I would want to understand the method section very, very carefully. But if I'm summarizing it, I may not need to know exactly how many participants. I mean, I may not have to include that in my summary. Um, so read the summary. Finally, look at numbers and graphs. So go back and look at all the numbers and the graphs. Again, this can be very informational uh, and help me understand the project as a whole. And if I'm doing more research in this, in this field, in this particular stream, then I would want to know those numbers and graphs for sure. But to do a general, over, a general overview or general summary, probably don't need those numbers and graphs. So the really important pieces for summaries would be in the abstract and in the conclusions or results section of the, of the article. Now, when you're reading a research article to do a summary, this may seem like, duh, but read the article in its entirety. Read the whole thing. After doing those steps, read everything. Another thing, use Google. If there's a word that pops up that's really big or several words you really don't know, Google it. You should be able to find some information there, maybe a definition to help you understand. Um, another technique uh, you could do when reading research to understand it is uh, use a double entry journal form. So again, if you hop on Google and just Google double entry form, you'll find a bunch of templates that you can pick from. And so basically, the basic structure of a double entry journal or double entry form is that you have a column here, 
where somebody can collect quotes from an article or from a book or from anything they're reading and put the quotes here. And then the other column on this side would be your comments or thoughts about those quotes. So that's why it's called double entry. Here's one entry, here's the second entry. So doing that can really help bring clarity to what you're reading. Um, passive reading can be uh, difficult to get deep comprehension if you just read it. You're not notating, writing anything, highlighting, or, or underlining. Uh, but doing a double entry can be really, really helpful. But on that note, pick up a pen, pick up a pencil or highlighter, mark things, make notes. This is going to help you understand the information and recall it better later. Another general thing is to reread the article. This does take time, especially if it's a lo longer piece of research. But read it, read it again. Or read a paragraph, and if it's not clear, go back to the beginning and read it again. And surprisingly, sometimes rereading will help you understand it. It will. Um, another thing, when summarizing uh, or reading for comprehension, unless you are yourself engaging in research that's going to be built, building upon the research you're reading, you probably don't have to understand every single minutia of the research that you're reading. So be okay with that. Be okay with not understanding every definition of every word that you've read. Maybe there's a technical word, it's like, I don't really get that, but I get the overall point that they're talking about. That's okay. So hopefully those tips help you with comprehending a research article. Now when it comes to summarizing the research article, here are a few things. If this is for, for a class, for an assignment, then refer to the rubric. Look for exactly what is being asked of a view that you need to follow. What's the formatting? What ideas are expected to be there? How, do they, how does your instructor want the summary to be organized? There's some important information in the rubric, so always check the rubric. Another thing to do is to create a running list of main points or main ideas. So main ideas are going to really help make a clear picture of the research as a whole. So pen and paper, type, either way, make a nice list of succinct main points. Those might be quotes or headings, just main points, key findings, bullet points from the article, and keep that for later reference. Also, you want to discard tangential points. So most researchers are going to include information that may not be the main thrust of the research. Well, in a summary, you can't include all of the tangential information because that would just be rewriting the entire article, essentially, and it would get way too long. So eliminate some of the tangential stuff. Don't be distracted by some of those things. Keep focused on the main points. Another thing to do is identify running themes. So you should see a, a, a theme in how they describe and what they describe. So uh, for our recent assignment, working memory capacity as an indicator of interpreting performance, well, you're going to see working memory capacity pop up a lot in various commentaries about how they were studying things, their results. That's going to be a running theme. So look for those running themes. Another really important thing is don't copy the exact words of the authors for a summary. You don't have enough space to do that. If you were to copy, let's say, several sentences, I mean, you're going to take up, you know, maybe half of a paragraph by just copying information directly. Don't do that. With a summary, you really want to take that information, reword it, put it in your own words, and type it into your summary. Um, so typically in a research article it's going to be kind of higher level writing or more difficult, more academic, more technical writing. So absolutely take that and put it into layman speak. Okay? So you have to do a little bit of interpreting from, you know, technical English to, you know, more layman English. You want to write in a way where it's very accessible to anybody reading it whereas the research itself might not be super accessible. Okay, um, even though you're not copying maybe direct quotes, you do want to take the ideas from the article. So these, you know, the main parts of your summary are going to be ideas that are presented there in the article. Now you may have some, some brief commentary of your own thoughts on those pieces of information, but it's mostly their ideas. You're summarizing it and providing it to the audience. You don't want to explain too much 
about your own ideas, your own thoughts, what you agree with, what you disagree with. There are particular assignments that may ask you to do that, but for a general summary, you don't want to do a lot of that. Make sure that your formatting is nice and consistent. Um, follow APA formatting if that's what the assignment des description has. Keep consistent fonts, margin spacing, etc. And so those are some tips for summarizing the research. Don't get too distracted by tangential points. Stay to the main points. Take notes of main points. Review your own notes, okay? And then when it comes down to actually summarizing it, follow the organizational structure of the assignment. So for ours, there were three headings. So follow those headings. Describe, you know, what was the purpose of the study? What's the application of the study? What were the main ideas of this study? And, um, you know, of course, use proper grammar, nice sentence structure, introductory, introductory sentences, transition sentences between paragraphs, you know, all of the writing techniques that um, hopefully you've learned at some point in your college education or high school education. So, again, hopefully this helps uh, you approach reading very technical research articles, comprehending it, and summarizing it for future assignments.